Mr. and Mrs. Martini, welcome home. Bread, that this house may never know hunger. Salt, that life may always have flavor. And wine, that joy and prosperity may reign forever. Enter the Martini Castle. Salt, that life may always have flavor. Part of a traditional Eastern European blessing for owners of a new home. Of course, we know too much salt is not good for. It's definitely not good for the blood pressure, which can create a whole host of other health problems. It's smart to read food labels to see how much sodium you're putting into your body. It's even smarter to taste your food before you reach for the salt shaker. You want to taste the actual food, right? Now, maybe you didn't know that, and maybe I've taught you something for the first time, that, that too much salt is not a good thing. If that's the case, I hope you'll take it to heart and maybe consider substituting a side salad for your fries every now and then. See? Simple nutritional advice didn't cost you a penny. But that's not good enough for certain elected officials. One official in Canada has decided that nutritional advice is a waste of time. She'd rather name and shame the purveyors of high salt. Another official in America is so nervous about it, he's actually preventing food from going to the hungry. Don't believe me? Well, in that case, it's time for some Canadian common sense. Let's start here at home in Canada. Libby Davies, NDP health critic, MP Vancouver East. She's concerned about the estimated thousands of Canadians whose lives are cut short by excessive sodium consumption. And she should be. But what are her proposed solutions? First, she wants to implement timelines for packaged food manufacturers to reduce sodium in their products. Number two, she wants to create a national public registry where food companies would report sodium levels in their foods. Three, she wants to put labels on those foods that would say something like this. This food does not meet Health Canada's sodium reduction targets. Excess sodium is a leading cause of hypertension, heart attack, and strokes. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is exactly what the Ontario Medical Association wanted to do to food products heavy in sugar. And it's what uh, cigarette manufacturers have been required to do for years. And when smoking doesn't decrease satisfactorily for governments, they demand bigger labels, more graphic labels, sometimes even removing brand names from cigarette packs, whether those ideas are proven to work or not. Hey, Libby, why not just focus on education? Require students to learn about nutrition, uh, healthy cooking. They'll need to know those things when they're grown up anyway. And if they avoid purchasing foods high in sugar and salt, those foods will disappear from shelves the, the natural way, the, can I say this, the free market way. I guess that might take too long. Well, if you thought her ideas were nutty, wait until you hear about what must have inspired her. March of this year, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, the man who saves the Big Apple from obesity, one extra large soda at a time, goes to a new extreme in his war on salt, fat, sugar, and low fiber. Want to donate food to a homeless shelter in New York City? Sorry, you can't. Literally, you're not allowed. See, the city's food cops can't analyze your donated food for nutritional content. The risks of a homeless person eating it, just too great. One man tried to donate a pot of cholent, that's a Jewish meat and vegetable stew, and some bagels. He was turned away. Okay, I'm sorry, but is it completely unreasonable to suggest that people living in homeless shelters might benefit from a few extra calories? That maybe the last thing they're worried about is personally meeting Bloomberg's nutrition edicts? That they're happy to receive donations of food, period, high fiber and low salt or not? How can you claim to be designing these policies in the name of the public good when they actually prevent people from doing good in public? And the guy with the bagels? He pointed out that his own grandparents ate high salt food all their lives, lived into their late 90s. But once again, it's easier to implement one-size-fits-all nutrition rules and skip the step of explaining any of the reasoning behind it. By the time you reach a certain age, you should know how to read a label, a food label. You should know what kinds of foods and beverages are good for you and what kinds aren't. And if you don't know those things, you're behaving irresponsibly. And that's why the likes of Libby Davies and Michael Bloomberg are declaring on salt. 
because they're doing exactly what some everyday Canadians and New Yorkers are doing, blaming the food, not the mouths chomping on the food. And even responsible eaters and food makers will have to put up with their rules because of it. So what's the best cure for high nanny state pressure? Behaving like a grown-up so they don't treat you like a child. That's Canadian common sense.